It's fantastic. It's terrific. The subtlety is immense. How do you introduce a film that needs no introduction? Pink sparkly blob. Pink sparkly blob. A piece of art that transcends all genre. We want it's typical science fiction. You're really an ungrateful little pen, you know that? Who cares, Doc? It's better in the dark. Son of a bitch! You bastard! An entity that single-handedly raised the consciousness of the globe. The masterpiece needs no introduction. Because after all, it's not just a story about a man who stabs things with a pen which contains a pink sparkly blob that is the offspring of a pink alien which causes body parts to enlarge, which scares the doctor who makes house calls and is seduced by the dinner guest in front of her husband while the man with the pen is in the bathroom which causes a flood. It is in fact the greatest film of all time. However, despite its popularity, it is not without controversy. Steve Lifshay, the director of the masterpiece, attempted to sabotage the premiere of the film by breaking into the projection booth, tearing the film off the projector, and ripping it apart with his teeth. He then vanished. Rumor has it that Steve now lives a reclusive life at some undisclosed address just outside of Manhattan, supposedly working on Masterpiece 2. But is this really true? After having what appeared to be a mental breakdown during a stage performance, the star of the masterpiece, Tom Walsh, left a note for his ex-girlfriend stating, I will be leaving the civilized world in order to work things out. Search parties of devoted fans have been scanning the globe for years, but Tom has also never been found. That is, until now. This documentary, the result of a decade-long search by one of Steve's former film school classmates, announces the long-awaited discovery of the two missing men. But first, let's meet some of the other characters associated with this famous film. With the collaboration of talent we had on this picture, could there have been any other title but the masterpiece? You must be the doctor. Just moved in, huh? I'm a sexuality coach. I'm really brought in to make sure that people can convey the kind of sexuality that's called for in their part. She's all expecting and, and full of anticipation, and, and he doesn't know what's going on. He's really rather unsuspecting in all of this. So they're suddenly brought together in this, this great moment, this, this, this rush of, of, of water. Under the light. Who cares, Doc? It's better in the dark. And it's whew, real, really orgasmic. Steve Lifshay came to me with his project. He knew he needed help bringing humanity. And he knew that the Kistler technique would be able to reach into the audience, grab them by their hearts, their minds, their throats, and draw them into the story. They're characters who are dealing with a, uh, an extraordinary circumstance. For the, the woman with the ear, we took a five pound sack of gold metal flour and um, duct taped it to her face. For the actor who has an enlarged foot, I made them wear a clown shoe. The enlarged nose, I basically just, you know, told them stories from my childhood. 
We're both working in the field of uh, theoretical anatomy. We study the development of appendages and uh, features of, of mammals in general, but we extrapolate up from mouse models and, and different invertebrate systems also. Just from a purely classically Darwinian uh, survival pressure standpoint, a large ear would uh, impart an advantage, of course. We're going to send air right through it. Right from my little tank right there. Initially, Steve brought in a uh, traditional special effects uh, person. You're, you're, you're aware it's his foot, you see the foot, and you see it get bigger. I took a look at the uh, ear that the traditional special effects man was developing at the time, and uh, I was very concerned about the color. I said, this is an ear that's not fully vascularized. This is something that you'd take into an emergency room and have amputated. I usually do shit like this with compressors and a soundstage and another room where I have all my shit and run the stuff in with hoses. He seemed reasonable. He did a lot of nodding. He agreed with a lot of the things we said. Eventually, we went in. We looked at the work that he had started doing. Um, I looked down and I said, oh, that's a, that's a pretty good beginning for uh, for the ear, you know, and, and he looked at me blankly and said, that's the foot. You can do a lot of damage to somebody with a pen. This is a mighty weapon. People don't realize that. The lot, uh, it ha it's, what's nice about it is it's always available. We always have it. Businessmen have it. Housewives have it. Everybody has it. And people don't realize how dangerous this weapon can be. And that's the last straw! Ow! Oh! Whether the cap is on or whether the cap is off, it can be an ultimate fighting tool. The hypnotist was a family friend. We were neighbors for years. We invited him over for Thanksgiving. He babysat for the kids. Then when we needed a hypnotist for the film, we offered him the job. Pink, sparkly blob. Pink, sparkly blob. Pink, sparkly blob. The hypnotist is good people.